Good morning, I'm warmly welcome on the next video of our uh, virtual trade show. My name is Szymon Gomułka and together with me is Daniel Oszczenda. Today we would like to talk a little bit about a very interesting topic about the food and beverage solutions, right Daniel? Yeah, and today we will present you two technologies related to food and beverage, more two solutions. Inside of those solutions we will talk about several different technologies, but we will talk about two key topics. Uh, one will be format change, uh, which is regarding the changes during the production. And, and, the, and the second topic is the uh, measuring the level of liquids, of bulk, of, of something like this, of grain. It's also very interesting. We, we prepared a lot of uh, specialistic um, solutions for that. So let's start uh, from the format change. As we all know, nowadays there are several different kind of any kind of food and different products which are produced. What does it mean for us as customers? It's a great possibility to choose different size of the bars, different size of the different products with this kind of bottle, smaller, bigger. We can buy what we really need in this moment. But what does it mean for the production? Is that for the production huge challenge to adjust the production lines to changing requirements from the customer side. Because the production lines is not like that every company, every producer have different production line for small ketchup or for big bottle of ketchup. The key is how to adjust your production to have possibility to use the same line for producing different kind of products, different sizes in case of bottles, if you have cups, or even regarding the different sizes of the cartoons for the whole packaging with the foods. And today, we will, I would like to present several solutions which could help you to use the latest innovating technologies for adjustment of your machine in case of production. First of all, we need to give the information to the machine about the current production lot, about the current production size. And for that, we have several possibilities. Of course, we can type it somehow manually, but any kind of manual typing, any kind of manual putting information is always possible to make a failure by the people. So to avoid that, we propose to use two kinds of technologies, which both of them you can see here. One of those technologies is the camera system, for example. So camera-based, in that case, we are using the smart camera for recognizing size of the house of the bottle. In our demo show, we present this smart camera who recognize on the transport line size of the bottles. You can see here we have smaller and bigger bottles, and depending of what kind of size is detected by the smart camera, you could see that size is adjusted. So we have a movement of this part which is transporting the, these bottles. And what additional we need, in ex, except only the recognition of the size, we have to also check if the adjusted size is adjusted correctly. So for that, we can use different kind of measuring technologies to check if the adjusted position is the right one, which was primarily planned. So for that, in that cube, you can see two kind of measuring devices. One is our magnetostrictive transducer, BTL. In that case, with this floating magnet above him. It's, in that case, we are using the IO-Link interface to connect data out of that. So you can very easily get information about the position without analog signals, without needing of the processing. Just connect this measuring device to network master model, and those information could be transferred automatically to control system. Other possibility, 
which we show you if you really need high precise uh, measurement up to some micrometers, you can have magnetic linear encoder, our BML, which is also presented here with the magnetic tape. <clears throat> so magnetic tape is glue on the constant part of the machine and head on the movable part and moving across this uh, magnetic tape gives you exact position about the current change of the current product which we produce. And this is one of the approach. Second approach, which you can see here, we have RFID head. So this changing of the production could be also applied by putting some definite code tag with the defined information what kind of products we now produce. So in this case also could be presented or ch change the position by the machine by using RFID technologies as a source of the information what is the current mm -hmm. lot size, how, what kind of products we currently produce. So the RFID technology could be used for that. And this is one of the technology and one of the group of the solution which we present you that you can make your production very flexible and up to date to help you to react quite quickly and very precisely to the requirements of the market for the requirements for your customers. And that's the first technology. Yes, I would like to add that as you can see, uh, here we are also connecting many different technologies. In the one of the previous episodes, we talk uh, a lot of about uh, condition monitoring. There we are also talking about connection of different uh, technologies. It's the same here, it's absolutely something different. We have different product lines, different approach for the products, but it's the same idea. We have to connect everything. And here is the, the, the question, because we are using smart camera. Daniel, uh, in my opinion, smart camera is very, very well um, cho choice because it's uh, very easy to integrate on the production line, right? Yeah, you are, you are definitely right. The, the, the smart camera is the, the great choice, gives you a lot of possibilities. We have separate uh, webinar for you regarding our machine vision solutions, which smart camera is part of. Uh, with this device, you can really adjust, <coughs> adapt the smart camera for different kind of products, different kind of applications, uh, what you would like to check. So the smart camera is very flexible because as you can see, you can use the different C-mount uh, lenses to, it depends from the, how big is the object, how far you can be mounted from the object, uh, like you well known from any photography. Uh, you can mount additional lightings depending from the application, depending on the object, depending on the surface of the object which you would like to check and so on. And this is only from the optical part of view. The software, the whole software is integrated inside of the smart camera. So there is no separate uh, evaluation unit in, that in this application. All vision control is performed inside the smart camera. In case of communication, it's also a big advantage of this solution because uh, you can very easily integrate this over the simple I.O. signals if the production has only few different kind of products you need, you could need, it, it could be enough for you to choose one or two or three maybe different products. So in that case, digital signals could give the information about current production load to the machine. But as an additional option, we have the network interfaces here. So it could be trans transmitted over the Profinet, for example. So the Profinet uh, interface is capable to transmit a lot of uh, information about details, what kind of product is recognized and so on. So you can adjust your production for very different kind of uh, products. So, and additional, uh, what you will hear a lot of in separate webinar, the smart camera is equipped with IO-Link interface which gives you possibility to make a visualization, for example, for your control station without any external PLC. So you just, just could connect directly the smart, uh, the such kind of smart light, for example, for visualization directly to the smart camera. And depending from the current production, display definite information. So this is a yeah, great product for that application. Yeah. 
uh, our smart lights is also a great um, product to show the uh, level of something uh, because the smart light has different uh, modes inside. Uh, I'm thinking about the stack light, for example, run light mode or about the level mode. And we can use it to show the level of, uh, of our, for example, tanks. And uh, on this cube, I would like to show many different um, products which help us to uh, measure the level of uh, the many different materials. Uh, the one very easy method is you, you, we can measure the level using pressure sensor. Yeah. It's the same pressure sensor what, like we talk about um, in the episode about the condition monitoring. So today in this version we have each type of output which is necessary for us. So we have uh, digital output, binary output, analog output, and IO-link output in one uh, device. But sometimes it's not necessary to use the BSP pressure sensor. Uh, and then we are recommending mostly to using uh, capacitive sensors. We have different approaches when we are talking about the capacitive sensor. The first one, if we can, uh, to have the, the direct contact between the sensor and the, uh, the fluid which is inside the, the tank. It means that we need to have the special adapter, we need to have the special hole in the tank. Then uh, we have the sp sensors with special um, housings. And uh, the sensing phase is made, for example, from PEAK or from Teflon, and we can adjust it directly to the right type of the, uh, of the, of the of the fluid, uh, that's, that's the one approach. And one question, if mm -hmm. we have the sensor directly uh, inside the, the, the fluid or different, if we are talking about the food, for example, the ketchup, mayo, yes. so if we have more liquid leg, media, yeah. what is, if this remain on the sensor, does it influence the measurement or we have some solutions to avoid that? It depends. Yeah? <laughs> it depends. If you, are, if you will use the standard sensor, then probably you will have problem with measuring, yes, but we were preparing the special technology many, many years ago. Uh, the name of this technology is the smart level, and uh, I have the example of the, this type of the sensor here. Yeah, here's the sensor with the special, of course, the sensing phase, you can uh, keep the contact with the media, and uh, if, for example, ketchup or mayonnaise will stay, in the, not so much, a little bit of the ketchup will stay, this sensor ignore this. Yeah, so we got the uh, information about the real level of the, of the, of the medium inside the tanks. Yeah, that's, the, that's the huge benefit of this type of the sensor. Of course, we are helping our customers to choose the right solution for their application. And uh, mostly, in my opinion, 99% of application we are making, for example, tests before. Uh, we, we will decide that this sensor will be 100% right uh, choice for, for this type of application. Uh, sometimes we cannot uh, have the direct contact between uh, the sensor and the media. Then capacitive sensor, we have also versions uh, which are ready to measure the, the, the level of the medium through the wall. This wall could be uh, like here uh, from a plastic or could be from a glass. Uh, it depends, of course, the, the thinkers of the, of, the, of the wall. It depends on the material, but we are talking about from 0 to 10, from 1 to 10 millimeters. Yeah, so. And then a sensor, uh, each capacitive sensor has the special adjustment place. We can adjust the, the capacitive of the medium which is behind the wall, and we can um, measure the level without the, uh, without the contact with the medium. Uh, of course, if you doesn't have enough place, sometimes we have the special uh, bypass on the tanks. Then we have the smaller version of the of the sensors. This one is adhesive, and uh, we have to connect it because it's too small to integrate electronics necessary to to, to this sensor for working. We have the special adapters and. Um, if we have, for example, tanks and application where is uh, the, the pump necessary, so we have to pump the medium up to the maximum level, and when the level goes to the minimum, then we have to once again uh, switch on the pump. All the functionality we can make on, here in this, in, uh, in this, in, in this amplifier, yeah, that's, that's the benefit because you can connect two sensors to one amplifier, and on the output you will get the one binary signal you can uh, send directly to the uh, to the relay or to the to, 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 to the pump 
it's, it's the one type of the of the sensor. Uh, difference one we have here, maybe this one first. Daniel taught something about the feedback uh, on the uh, production line when we are changing form. He taught about the BTL, ball of transducer linearity uh, sensors, uh, transducers, those transducers using magnetic field. Uh, here we have the float with, with the magnet inside and the level is measuring using the magnets inside the, inside the element. It's the absolute uh, measuring. We have many different versions, of course, about with, with, where we are talking about the length of this element or when we are talking about the uh, possible interfaces also. Here we have connected our BTL with a uh, displayer. Uh, so at this moment we see the, the real va value of this uh, measurement. If for example we have some silos of huge tanks, we can use BMD, uh, guided radar sensor is also a quite new product in our offer. It's very interesting because, as you can see, here is the rod and we doesn't have any elements on this rod. How it works? It works like a radar. Yeah. Uh, electronic is preparing the special wave who is going through the, the rod. And here we have the air, here we have the water, we have different um, media, medias, yeah. yes. And uh, we get the different signal from the media directly to the uh, to the element and we know where is this place, where is the place where the media is connected with the air. Yeah, that's the one benefit. The second one is uh, we can measure, for example, level of oil. If we will have the water and we will have the oil, oil, oil is, uh, the weight of oil is smaller than water, we can measure the level of water and the level of oil. So we will get the, we will get the information about two, uh, two places on, on the wave guide. And then we can measure how many oil we have in our tanks. And uh, what about the length? Uh, it's amazing because we are talking about maximum 75 meters. Yeah? Then, of course, we don't have uh, a stale uh, road. Then we will have the, the cable, a special cable we can connect with our silo. And we can measure uh, level of media, of fluid, or we can, of course, measure, for example, the level of grains, the level of bulks, and, or, or something like so, this. Any different kind of bulk materials, yeah? Yeah. And as of course, I think what is very important in the product, uh, you can adjust the length uh, of this road mm. or rope yeah. by yourself. It's not necessary to order the definite mm -hmm. length. So you can cut it and quite easily adapt to application by just cutting the, the measuring element uh, according to your needs. So like Shimon said, the different possibilities using this road or rope, which you can cut it and adjust to the application. And if you are talking about the bulk, uh, bulk materials like grains, in some cases you have explosion proof, uh, explosion uh, areas. So this measuring devices are, and also a uh, device uh, with magnet, our BTLs transducers are available in uh, AX technology, so you can install in explosion proof uh, environments, so you can safely measure your level of your goods also in different uh, difficult uh, condition with explosion proof necessary products. And we have also redundant versions of BTL yeah. also. And, uh, you tell about uh, uh, the cutting. I have one more product which is also ready to be cut. This one is the BCW, Ball of Capacitive uh, Sensor. In my opinion, is the one of the most interesting capacitive sensor in our portfolio because it's very innovating. And how to define the innovation? And uh, it's, it's hard questions. Uh, I found uh, that the answer that if you are doing something different, then you can talk that this is innovating. Our sensor, all the sensor elements are on the self-adhesive tape. You can glue, you can glue the, the sensor to your tank and you will get the, through the wall information about the level. Normally this sensor is available in 850 millimeters long yeah? and you can cut it as much as you can and then you can connect it directly to your tank and using the uh, special amplifier you can connect it to your, with your uh, steering system 
Uh, for example, with violin. Yeah, we will talk a uh, lot of violin in next. And you video. have a co constant measurement. Yeah, not yeah. A... always you have constant measurement. This automatic uh, adjusting to the real value because um, you got the information about the capacitive. For your point of view, it's not interesting what's the value. You are looking for the delta. You are looking for the change. Yeah, if you are change, you can program everything as you as you like. And I think this is very important if we are talking about the level measurement. In some cases, you have some tanks when the access for the people is uh, not so easy, but you need to monitor, you have to give the right information. Like Shimon said in the beginning, please remind that it's very easy using, for example, the IonLink technology to connect any kind of this uh, sensor to level measurement with display. So you can mount this kind of uh, signal lamp with level mode, which shows you exactly what kind of level is on which uh, level we are currently in our tanks. So you maintenance have, if we, know, if we are on the right level with defined product, if we have enough products in the tanks and so on, easily without direct access to this tank. Thank you so much for listening to this video. Uh, if you have any question, please feel free to, to introduce them. Our specialists are waiting for getting your answer of them. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us on today's webinars. Uh, today's webinar was about solution for packaging and fraud industry. Thank you, Daniel and Simon, for your uh, introduction to Teams. And now let's move on to answer your questions, because that's my today's job. Well, let's start with Marek's question. Uh, Marek, you'll ask us, uh, how thick can the wall be for the contactless capacitive sensors? Can the wall be made out of metal? Uh, well, thank you, Marek, great question. Uh, Ma Simon mentioned, uh, I guess, about the uh, thickness of the wall. Uh, well, it can be, depending on the sensor, depending on the, uh, on the width and the height of the uh, measurement field, it can be the wall can be thick out of from one to ten millimeters, and it is uh, really it is nice you mentioned about the metal wall. Well, it cannot be made out of metal because uh, the capacitive sensor work like a component of the RLC uh, car, uh, car circuit. So uh, using a metal wall, you just disturb the circuit and the measurement cannot be reliable. Uh, I mean, if you got any further question, just feel free to ask us. Let's move on to Andrew's uh, question. Uh, Andrew asks us, uh, what interfaces does the magnetostrictive transistor, transducer use? How long can they be? About the interfaces, well, we can supply you with uh, every interface uh, you can imagine of about the profiled uh, uh, BTLs, uh, the magnetostrictive transducers. About the transducers used for uh, f food and uh, beverage and other, uh, this kind of uh, more high environments, we only supply BTLs with current and voltage analog output. About the length, uh, the BTLs uh, used for measurement of the uh, water level, they can be about two and a half millimeters long. Other BTLs like the profiled one can be up to seven meters long. We can uh, support you with every length you want. You can just use our website to send us a, a query. Okay. Let's move on to Ivan's uh, question. Well, Ivan, you asked us a really long question. Let's read it aloud. Do you have a solution in our portfolio that can reliably de detect the application of adhesive? Uh, you supplied us with information about the temperature. It is about 100 degrees, the speed of the adhesive, and uh, the color. Uh, well, thank you, Ivan. Uh, I'm sure we can support you with a solution. But uh, about this kind of application, firstly, we need to know about the whole physical environment. We need to know how it's all uh, mounted together, how, it's, how it all works. 
uh, we can surely support you with uh, some capacitive sensors. We got sensors that are re reliable for high temperatures, but we need to test them. So feel free to contact our Balif colleagues from the region. We will surely uh, just uh, contact you and uh, keep you up to date with our solutions and help you to choose the right one. So that's our job. Uh, about, uh, I would like to mention, all our workers are now working uh, for the sake of our their health uh, remotely, so uh, we can uh, contact you wirelessly and uh, super support you even with our products, even if we are working uh, in our homes. Our website works 24 hours, so feel free to contact us. Let's move on to Carol's uh, question. Thank you, Carol. You asked us about the radio level sensor. How long can it be? Well, uh, Simon uh, surely uh, answered your question. It can be up to 75 meters long. And uh, about this length, we can support you with other uh, special equipped sensors with a longer rod. So feel free to ask us about these uh, sensors. Thank you, Carol. Okay, Russo, uh, you asked us about the smart light. If there is a IP69K housing. About this, uh, for now, we got only IP67 housing. About other smart lights, we will keep you up to date with other uh, releases. So uh, just feel free to ask us everything per email. Okay, Andrea, uh, the sensor level. N1 are able for work on a metal tank. Actually, uh, I'm not sure if I understand you correctly, so feel free to correct me or uh, send us another question. About the sensor level, well, uh, I mentioned uh, the capacitive sensor that can be used for level measuring. They only can work on a non-metal wall. So if you ask us about the metal tank, I I'm afraid it won't be working as well as on a non-metal surface. So thank you for your information. Okay, Russo, uh, you asked us another question. Thank you very much for your attendance. Well, uh, about the differences in the BSP, the valve pressure pr sensor, about the difference between generation first and generation second. About the first generation, you had to order uh, the, pre uh, the pressure sensor, not only uh, for your described uh, pressure value, pressure measure range, but also for the uh, interface. Well, the second generation got all the interfaces packed into one, so you don't have to need a separate, uh, a separate sensor for other interface. You can use one sensor to uh, get analog values, ioling values, and uh, discrete values like uh, PNP and C. Okay, so if someone's got other questions, just feel free to ask us. Uh, if you want to contact us, just feel free to email us. Our colleagues from the region will surely contact you. And I see no other questions that are arriving. So uh, thank you for your attendance today. And we will see you on our next webinars. Goodbye and have a nice day.